Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining me here today. I will be combining something a little bit different than what I normally make, and I'm so glad you're here. Please, when you have a chance, do subscribe to my channel. I always love your comments, and I'm always so happy to see you on board here. So guess what we're doing today? Two projects, a jellyfish and a seahorse. I like jellyfish. <laughs> the jellyfish will be a paper lantern that holds a candle, and a seahorse is a Valentine's Day card. I will be combining several mandala projects, and I wanted to introduce you to a, to a new artist, well, new to me, and they make these wonderful mandala projects. This is uh, Animal Mandala. This is a fish. They have each one categorized. This one is a really clever looking turtle. I could just imagine all the colors you can add to it. This one is the Animal Mandala turtle. And of course, there's a cool jellyfish. Look at this thing. They're so talented. And I will put up a description right here for you. And I will also link it uh, in my video below. So you will get to see that. But uh, they're so, so detailed with their work of art. I mean, look at this. It's absolutely so, so cool. So, of course, you know me, I, I love to try new things. And, uh, and I will be combining several of these Mandela projects. Look at those seahorses. Aren't they beautiful? I really, really like them. The details are incredible. And as you know, Mandela's, you color them in and create magnificent pictures. And, I mean, I could just imagine the colors here. And there is a ton of choices that you have on their site. So I, I encourage you guys to go visit them. So check this out. Here's what I'm going to be doing. I'm combining part of the deer. I am also combining the jellyfish, of course. And some parts of the seahorse. See? Those are the ones. So I am just using a regular Sharpie pen. Nothing extraordinary that's the color i had at home and i am using this uh see-through uh it's it's not a paper it's it's an acetate sheet and what i did is i just went over the uh beautiful mandala that this uh, this uh jellyfish mandala and i traced it that's all i did and look you see that little curly cue right there that i made it look like something a little different watch See that? Look at the tail of the seahorse. I used that one right there and made it look like a seashell. So you can do so many different things with different Mandela projects. You can combine different parts of them. And I'm just trying to give you some ideas what I did here. Look at that one right there. The one with the brown uh, color right there. There is my other pen that I used. And that's the actual antler from this beautiful deer head. So I used that to make it look like a coral. It's uh, something super simple, but I really didn't feel like hand drawing it. And this was so perfect. I just saw that and, and use the antler and make it look like a coral, something for underwater. And all I did is I, as I took it and, and traced over it. And these acetate sheets you can, you can buy at an, any craft store, they have them. And uh, the chameleon pen I really, really like because it's, uh, it's an alcohol-based pen. And uh, look what I did. See that? Let me get another sheet of paper under there so you can see it better. Here we go. So what I did there is I just uh, added the purple color. I took the, uh, the deer's head where the anther was and I traced over that. And now I'm adding the little flowers on there to make it look like little coral pieces under the ocean. And this will be my lantern. So it's something so simple. You guys can just draw little lines and, and, that's all it takes. So you can use a Mandela art and use it for other than just coloring it in. And this is what I'm trying to show you. You could trace this uh, object or another object and creating a lantern like this is really, really easy. You see that, that vellum paper right there? That's the same size as the see-through acetate sheet that I was using earlier. And here I'm using a wonderful paint. Uh, it's from Courtney Paints. I have used her product before, you guys know. Um, I have a lot of her paints, and I really, really like them. Now, in this case, I will be using three different colors. And you see those little gems? They're actually uh, buffed uh, rocks. It's kind of cool. They, they look like marbled rocks. And I got those, oh, my goodness, oh, a while back. I think I got them at Michael's. And they had a big jar and it was on sale. And I really like to use them for art projects. And I will be using those very shortly. Look at these beautiful colors. So 
as you know, uh, Courtney makes her own paints and uh, they shimmer and they're absolutely beautiful and I do like to use them. I have used them before in my previous videos and on vellum, when you use her water-based paints, they're actually gouache paints. And uh, when you are using it on vellum, you don't want to use a lot of water because it will warp the vellum. However, in this case, that's what I want. <laughs> so I am using more water. I'm trying to create, oops, there goes one of those. <laughs> I have no idea what part of me was attached to. It just jumped right out. Anyhow, uh, I am using more water here because I do want to have a ripply effect. Uh, this jellyfish is swimming, obviously, underwater. And since the lantern will be see-through because the light will be coming out from the back, a little bit of warping will create a very nice effect. So just remember, more water means more warping on your vellum. It's not too hard to remember, and uh, on some uh, areas of your vellum creations, it actually looks really nice, almost like you're giving it an artificial embossed technique. So here I am gluing the two pieces of paper together. One is that see-through uh, uh, acetate sheet and then the other one is the vellum and what I had done here if you'll notice I inverted my jellyfish I had the outside where I drew the jellyfish and I traced it from the Mandela art uh, I turned that over and I put that towards the inside of the vellum the reason I did that because usually when you have certain things that you leave out for example uh, like something like this like a lantern to cover up candles you might want to clean the outside if it gets dusty and I didn't want to go ahead and risk the fact that it, the outside will be cleaned and for some reason maybe alcohol wipe is used and then uh, cleans all the jellyfish off see that's where the actual uh, print is where I traced my um, my jellyfish, but I'm turning that on the inside. You don't have to do that. I just did that because I wanted to make sure I don't ruin my creation or the person that I'm going to be giving this to. Uh, they'll be able to go ahead and clean it. And what I'm doing here is I am attaching the pieces of papers, as I said before, just using double-sided tape. See? Adding it where it's needed. And you don't need to use big pieces. You could use smaller pieces. And with the vellum, uh, it is uh, it is obviously very difficult to to tape some vellum down because you will see that very slight gluey effect on the vellum. And here, uh, what I'm doing is I'm folding the paper together, and I'm making sure it's dry, and it is. <laughs> and I'm adding a few extra pieces and hiding it within the the art of the Mandela art. And this way, the tape is not going to be so showing as much as if I were to just place it anywhere on the sheet. But as you will be seeing, I will be adding some extra pieces of tape into certain different areas so these two pieces of paper can actually uh, glue together very well and they don't separate because it wouldn't look really good. See it right there on top, it had like a little bubble. And the reason I didn't cut this out from the video because I wanted you to see that you can add tape where you need it. And later on, I'm going to be adding some embellishments on there to hide those little pieces of tape. There is my little glass container. And if you guys don't have a real candle or don't want to use a real candle, you can use one of those artificial ones, you know, the ones with a battery. But I didn't have one on hand, so I'm just using a real candle. And um, because the candle is nice and big in the jar, I don't have to worry about uh, the paper touching it. So here what I'm doing is I'm actually gluing some little pieces of, um, of uh, a tape onto my embellishments. Those are those circle embellishments that I had. See right there? And those were some of the pieces of the tape that I had uh, placed so I can hold those two pieces of paper together. And I'm using these glue dots. And uh, I'm using two glue dots per uh, embellishment because I really wanted to make sure that it's going to stick on very well. See? There's a little piece of tape right there. You can kind of see it. See that? That's why I'm hiding it. So I'm just adding these, uh, these nice uh, rock, uh, you know, things that I found at Michael's when I bought them way back when. And I really like it because it also weighs down this lantern. So I don't have to worry about it being blown away, um, you know, if a wind happens to catch it when the, uh, the candle is on. You always want to make sure you're nice and safe. I don't have to tell you guys that. So don't burn down your place, please. <laughs> all, the all the disclaimers you need to know. And, and of course, just uh, be careful. You know, that's, that's a given. So please make sure you're, you're responsible. 
And as you could see, I did glue the two pieces of uh, paper together already on the back. And so I do have that circle. I cut that out of the video. I figure you guys already know how to do that. Basically, I just use my double-sided tape. And I'm just adding some more of uh, those rocks on there. And I, uh, I'm i just picking random spots. There is really no reason or rhyme to any of it. But uh, that's what I was just doing. Just, uh, you know, gluing it where I saw fit. And when you make your art and you have your embellishments, you will be doing the same thing. Look at it. Just use your judgment and wherever you like it, put it right there. It doesn't have to be any specific spot. I just put it random areas. Some areas I did cover of the tapes that I used earlier to attach those two pieces of paper together. But in some areas, I just, you know, use the double-sided um, glue dots and I just plopped it on the paper. It's as simple as that. And as you could see right now, my um, my lantern is seamless, pretty 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 close to seamless. You could still see a little bit of that glue right there on that uh, edge. Can you see that straight there? So right there. Okay. So you can leave it like that certainly if you want to, but I didn't want to do that, so I decided to go ahead and get some washi tape. And washi tape is really cool. They have them in different colors. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. I have a little box of different washi tapes here, and I just picked one that I thought would work best. And I kind of like the glitter on here, and the blue color seemed to work with my ocean theme for my jellyfish. So I just cut a piece, and with washi tape, since it's, it's, it's a tape, you don't have to add any extra glue. I just use that right on top of that area where I glue the two pieces of paper together. And certainly you can use it uh, around the borders too. So you can put some on the tops, on the bottoms, you know, you can crisscross them. You can create your own different, uh, uh, you know, shapes and art as you wish with a washi tape. But I didn't need to do that. I just, I just added it on just like that. Trim the excess. And see, look how easy that is. It's done. Look at that. It's so simple. And remember, um, this company that does these mandalas, they have so many different creations that they had drawn up. It's absolutely amazing. So I just use those few that I combined here, but you certainly are welcome to look on their site and check out what they have because they do have a lot of things. And see how cool that water background looked like with, uh, with Courtney's paints. I like those colored mixtures that I used and, you know, you could have added different colors in there and I certainly could have added some more pink if I wanted to but I didn't do that I just I just used those three colors right there see that's it and I kind of created a wavy looking effect so there was really no pattern to it so if your hands shake a little bit or they're not imperfectly straight line it's actually a good thing because water has ripples there's my little candle my little candle holder and once I light it up you have your little see-through lantern, which makes it really nice. And I'm getting some matches. And I'm going to light it up so you can see this. And don't go away. I will have another video after this one. And I will show you my seahorse video that is like a Valentine's Day video. My friend Grace asked me to make her uh, a lantern and kind of show her, you know, what it looks like and how it's made. So Grace, sweetheart, I hope you like this and uh, you enjoy it. And remember, you could trace any sheet of paper, any any subject, any art form, and put it together and make your own lantern. I made this as simple as possible so you guys can have your own ideas and create your own lanterns from whatever you want. You could actually trace a photograph. So if you have someone's face that you want to trace or your pet, your dog, your cat, you certainly could do that. But look how easy this is. And I took some pictures here for you guys to kind of get the idea. I just put it on my uh, on my board that I use for crafting. But see, look at that. And again, this is a real candle. You don't have to use a real candle. All right, so hang tight. And we have a seahorse card right now that I used from Recycled Package. And again, I used uh, Pixaroma for this particular card. I bought this truffle mousse and I really liked the way the packaging looked. And you're probably going, what? <laughs> so there is my acetate sheet and I, I chose a, a very nice mandala that I really liked from here. Um, and you'll see it's the seahorse. And I didn't do the whole set. I just did one. It's so beautiful. 
Uh, but in this case, because my, uh, my surface was smaller, I decided to just do one of the seahorses. So I have my acetate sheet, something super easy. And all I'm doing is tracing the seahorse. It's such a beautiful and clean art that this company made with a seahorse. It was actually very easy to trace. And since the uh, seahorse has such a nice shape, I figured, you know, I really didn't have to adjust anything. I didn't have to do anything different. Just trace it. And again, I'm using a, a pen that is very complimentary for this project because it is alcohol based and it will not rub off at all. And uh, I will be able to clean the acetate sheet once I'm done with it if I need to do so. And the project will stay on my acetate sheet. You don't want to use any water-based water paint for a project like this because it'll rub right off and your whole idea is to keep it as permanent as possible. So just use some sort of a permanent ink. See, that's it. Look how easy that is. So now I'm just kind of getting the idea where I'm going to be lining on my little seahorse and uh, I'm just trimming down the parts that I don't need because obviously it's a packaging of the truffle mousse and the truffle mousse, by the way, was really, really good. <laughs> and I'm just trimming it all down because I really liked how that effect was of the beige color going into another color and it had a very nice look to it. Now you'll see uh, there is some tape left over from the packaging and I really couldn't remove that because if I would have done so, I think I would have damaged the background so I decided not to do that. So all I'm doing right here is just adding my good old faithful double-sided tape again and adding on my seahorse right in the middle where I wanted it. And then I will be trimming off the extra acetate sheet. And since I have a nice uh, thick cardboard here, I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the scissor actually going in and cutting into the cardboard because it's nice and thick. So as long as I line it up right there on the edge, I'm good to go. I have these marble pieces of paper that I bought a while back again, and I wanted to uh, kind of figure out which color I will be using. So, you know, when you make something, you might not know right away what color the background is or, you know, how your image will turn out. So just line up your project against it if you can before you tear out the pieces of paper from your, from your bundle like I have here. So I'm kind of looking at the different colors and trying to figure out which is complementary. And as you could see, the blue worked really well, but I didn't want my horse to blend into it. So I'm choosing that yellow one. Plus with the yellow, it, it is very nice color to use with a beige and my card base. See, it's beige. It's got a couple of beige colors on it. So I figured, oh, okay, that, that's going to work for me. And so of course I'm being thrifty and I save part of the pieces of paper here that I will be trimming off and I will use that for another project later. Don't know what yet. It'll be a later, whatever it is. <laughs> I usually have a scrap box with extra paper that I keep in it. And I try not to keep it for any more than a month. If I don't use it in a month time, I just go ahead and toss it. But that's a good rule that I, that I try to follow. And here I just tape on that paper right there. And there's my background. And I did rotate the paper and chose it a little differently on the shape of the back of the seahorse. And since there are a lot of different seahorses and their varieties and sizes, I didn't mind the seahorse to be see-through. Now you certainly can color this beautiful seahorse in. I didn't do that. I just wanted to keep him see-through in this case because I liked it. This will be kind of like my little Valentine's Day card. And uh, I decided to go ahead and, uh, and uh, decorate the entire background there. I have just a simple card base that's regular size. And I wanted to make sure that I can uh, attach this seahorse on there. I didn't want to have a, a card base that was too large. And somehow this packaging worked out great. It's a regular size standard mailing. So it's perfect, but this is not going to be mailed. This is going to be hand delivered. And then I had this really cool looking uh, uh, thing here. <laughs> it's, it's a combination between a leaf and... It's somewhat plastic, somewhat cloth. I really don't even know what material this really is. I found this at the 99 cent store and I saw it in silver and they also had it in white and they had it in green. So I bought all three of them. This one is a silver base and it has a very nice 
a little bit of a shimmer effect, but I decided to use this and pretend this is my seaweed. I have used this before for leaf purposes, you know, like leaves on a tree. I have trimmed off the little leaves individually and put those on a card before. I have bundled them up in little circles and made little flowers out of them. So, you know, I will use my my different uh, threads and yarn and and ribbons, all kinds of different ways. I am trimming off the extra here because you really don't need a bunch of stuff on the back of your card. You don't need to make it bulkier than you need to have it any more than what's needed. And I am just taking off the extra pieces. See, and I'm not really being careful how I'm lining it up because I kind of wanted to give it a natural effect. You certainly can line them up to be perfect on both sides. I really was not interested in doing so. This is why you see me kind of plopping it on there and then adding that tape and uh, don't even really check the front. I already know it's going to be situating just fine. Now here in this case, I am using the tape because I don't want the glue to release from the back of the card. And the next thing you know, my little seaweeds are falling off. Tape is a great way to use whenever you really want to adhere something and have a nice strong effect and make sure it lasts. See, it doesn't have to line up and I didn't want it to line up. So I'm just removing the back side of the tape. Just like that. And I want to make sure that it's going to adhere to my card as best as possible. And you know, sometimes you will have larger pieces of tape that's a lot easier to remove than the smaller ones. So, you know, don't be impatient with it. Some of them will have a little bit of hard effect to get removed, but that's okay. They stick on. I didn't edit this out because I wanted you to see it in real time. I mean, how long did that take? Just a few seconds. So it's not that bad. See, and then I affix this to my card and then I'm ready to decorate. I wanted to put on the card first because I really wanted to make sure it lines up nicely. And, you know, I could have used those little pieces of paper. I'm kind of demonstrating, um, Ribbon, I should say, not paper. Uh, you can you could certainly put the little remnants on, but I didn't do that. I decided not to worry about it. I decided to use seashells instead. So I had this uh, package of different seashell embellishments that I bought a long time ago as well when it was on sale. I like to buy things on sale, <laughs> so <laughs> this way I try not to spend so much money. And um, I can certainly, you know, make the seashells myself and cut them out and create them out of paper and hand color them in. But I had these already, so I decided to just go ahead and use these. I believe these I bought from Joann's. They had a package of different seashells that were made out of paper, and I just decided to go ahead and use those here. And remember, my whole idea was to cover that tape that came on the packaging right there. See that? Because it's it's too shiny and you could really see it's a piece of tape covering that area up. And I couldn't remove it because I could have damaged the background card. So I decided to use something to cover it up. So I have a sand dollar there. And since these are double-sided, some have a little bit different colors on the back. Some have a little extra uh, glitter on them. Some will be darker on the back, so I'm I'm rotating them, trying to flip them over and see which color do I want to have up front and which color do I want to have on back. And what's really nice whenever you have different embellishments like these is uh, you have plenty of choices to, to make. See, like, look at that one. That is so pretty. It's just a little seashell that I just thought it was so beautiful. And, uh, you know, with seashells, there is really no right or wrong way of putting it on. So that's another tip that I have for me to you. Whenever you have certain objects that actually can go any way, you could rotate them upside down, left or right. It really doesn't matter because they're all over the place. Like, look at that one. That's a little snail thing. And this one too, like a little, it's not a cornucopia, but you know what I mean? It kind of looks like that, but it's not. Obviously, it's another seashell. And I don't know the names of it. I should know. I didn't look them up. So sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just put them any way you possibly can and get them situated. And as you see, I have a different uh, set of hearts there on the left-hand side. And I kind of, you know, kind of picked whatever I, I liked. And since this is going to be a Valentine's Day card, and I know the person I will be giving this to, I'm pretty sure they're going to like it because it has all the colors that they enjoy. So anytime you make something, just uh, use something that you know the other person, the recipient is going to like.
And by the way, you guys, I am so happy every time you join me and I love your, uh, your comments, your feedback, and I thank you for subscribing to my channel. I always appreciate that. See that little piece right there? I just took a uh, seashell for the inside of the card so I can incorporate the outside to the inside. And that is another way to bring in the front of the card to the inside of the card. You guys, thanks a million for being here. Have an awesome day. And thanks for joining me. Take care of yourselves. Bye.